Though in crime television shows and movies were often shown cases solved by a combination of investigative ingenuity and dogged police work, the reality is that some crimes are solved as a matter of pure coincidence. Though these cases aren't necessarily the ones investigators like to brag about, it seems that sometimes the stars align and lucky circumstances just seem to conspire on their own to catch criminals. Whether it's a missing person that turns up in the most unlikely of ways, or a murderer who almost gets away with it, closing these cases can be all the more satisfying in situations where most people had given up hope that they would ever be solved. Today, we wanted to take a look at a few examples of such cases, focusing on stories where chance intervened and crimes were solved as a result. Before we get to our list, don't forget to subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. With that out of the way, here are five terrible crimes solved by pure coincidence. April 28, 1997, started out as one of the best days of Mornay and Celeste nurses' lives, as they welcomed their new daughter Zephanie into the world. The baby girl was born in the Groot Schur Hospital in Cape Town, South Africa, and she was placed in a nearby crib while her mother slept. According to Celeste, at some point, a woman who appeared to be a nurse entered the room and comforted her and Zephanie, but when she next awoke, her daughter was missing. It was the beginning of a nightmare that would last almost two decades. A search of the hospital revealed a few articles of clothing belonging to the newborn, but none of these items assisted greatly in the search. The biggest lead in the case came in the form of a pillow discovered in a tunnel that connected the maternity ward directly to the street. It was believed the abductor used the pillow to appear pregnant in order to walk undetected through the ward, before changing into nurses' scrubs. Sadly, the next few years provided little in the way of answers for the grieving nurse family. Though on two occasions it looked as if the case would be solved, both times this turned out not to be true. The second time this happened, it was particularly heartbreaking, when it turned out that a woman calling and claiming to have information about Zephanie was simply an unscrupulous neighbor attempting to extort the family for tens of thousands of dollars. However, when the nurse's next oldest daughter Cassidy started classes at a new school in 2014, the family would experience an unimaginable twist of fate. It just so happened that one of Cassidy's new close friends was her 17-year-old missing sister. According to reports, the girls became friends almost immediately, despite their four-year age difference, and many people commented on their uncanny resemblance to one another. So much so that Mornay contacted investigators after Cassidy introduced him to the girl, who was going by the name Michelle Solomon. When Solomon's parents could not provide proof of her birth, a DNA test was conducted, and it was confirmed that Michelle was actually Zephanie Nurse. The kidnapper, Lavona Simone, was later convicted in the abduction case and sentenced to 10 years in prison. In May of 1992, a group of thieves known as the Preppy Bandits attempted to rob the Green Parrot Cafe in Salt Lake City, Utah. Unfortunately, the heist went sideways and the attempted robbery resulted in the tragic murder of Merritt Riordan, one of the cafe's cooks. Though all four men involved in the robbery were successfully captured, they were released on bail, and one of the men named Adam Golly decided to go on the run. When the case was profiled on America's Most Wanted nearly a year after the robbery and murder, employees of the Green Parrot eagerly tuned in to watch the episode. On the night it was set to air, the entire staff and many of the business's customers crowded around the cafe's TVs. The segment on Adam Golly was early in the program, but some continued to watch the show even after the profile was over. Those that stayed tuned made a shocking discovery. In a later part of the night's episode, America's Most Wanted also aired a segment about a man named Kenneth Lovesey. Lovesey was a former police officer who was wanted for sexually assaulting a child in Rollingwood, Texas. He also happened to be the Green Parrot's new cook who was working in the cafe's kitchen at that very moment. Employees took notice of the alarming situation immediately and the bartender proceeded to call the police. Staff were able to stall Lovesey until law enforcement arrived and he was arrested shortly after. He was eventually convicted and served seven years in prison. Adam Gawley was also later caught after a re-airing of his America's Most Wanted segment in 1995 led to the tip that finally got him arrested. On the night of June 6, 2000, Betty Jean Lee went to a bar called The Turnaround in Farmington, New Mexico. After the friends she arrived with left her to go spend the night with some men they had met, Betty was left alone and without a way home. 
she was approached by two men named Robert Fry and Leslie Eng, who offered to give her a ride. Sadly, Betty had no idea that Fry was actually a serial killer. The men drove her to a remote area where they stabbed her and beat her to death after they attempted to rape her, and she fought back. The next day, Betty's body was found by an electrical worker who followed a trail of blood he found off of the road. When police arrived at the scene, they discovered a cell phone belonging to a man named Charlie Bergen. It turned out that when Fry and Eng had left the scene of the crime that night, they got stuck in some mud on a nearby dirt road. They called Fry's parents to come and get them, only for their truck to get stuck in the mud as well. In a ridiculous further twist, the first tow truck to arrive on the scene also got stuck. Bergen was the driver of the third and final rescue vehicle that night, and given the late hour, he was reportedly not all that happy to be there. While towing the mired vehicles from the remote location, he supposedly got into a fight while on a call with his wife, throwing his cell phone away in anger. Though Bergen had no idea that Fry and Eng had just committed a brutal murder, nor could he have known the significance of tossing away his cell phone that night, his hasty decision was able to lead investigators right to the killers. Robert Fry and Leslie Eng were later arrested and convicted for the murder of Betty Jean Lee. On November 21st, 1990, Unsolved Mysteries aired a segment about four-year-old Nyleen Marshall, who disappeared while on a picnic with her family in Helena, Montana. Of the hundreds of calls that came into the show's telecenter that night, one stood out. The call was from a school official in Vancouver, British Columbia, who believed one of her students might be the missing girl. The woman told investigators that she knew the student as Mary Ann Kelly, but that she believed this to be a fake name. The 12-year-old girl was dropped off every day by a man who said his name was Robert, but several of the staff there felt his behavior was suspicious. For starters, Robert refused to give the school his contact information. When pressed for a telephone number or address, he would often say that he was between addresses. He would also frequently peer through the window of his daughter's classroom after dropping her off to make sure she was there. Investigators first put Marianne and Robert under surveillance, attempting to verify the pair's documents while they kept a close watch on them. When they discovered that Marianne's school records were fraudulent, they obtained a search warrant for the Kelly's house. An inspection of the property revealed a box of photos and documents that surprised investigators. Though they proved without a doubt that the Kelly's identities were fraudulent, there was a twist. Marianne was not Nyleen Marshall, but instead a different missing girl named Monica Judith Bonilla. Monica had been kidnapped by her father Guillermo eight years earlier. In September of 1982, Monica's mother, Rosemary, had arrived at their home in Burbank, California to find it completely empty and her daughter and husband gone. She had always held out hope of finding her daughter, but with no leads in the case, the investigation had long since gone cold. Guillermo had convinced Monica that her mother was dead, and so the girl had no idea that she had any other family to go back to. She was happily reunited with her mother and half-brother shortly before Christmas that year. Sadly, the disappearance of Nyleen Marshall remains unsolved. In June of 1984, Melanie Road of Bath, England, decided to go to a local nightclub with some friends. The 17-year-old had been preparing for her upcoming final exams and wanted a night of fun and relaxation with friends. Around 1.30 in the morning, Melanie left the club, telling those that she was with that she was going to walk to short distance home instead of taking a cab. Sadly, she never made it back that night. A few hours later, Melanie's mutilated body was found near some garages, not more than a minute's walk from her home. She had been brutally sexually assaulted and stabbed almost 30 times. At the scene, police discovered a trail of blood leading away from the body that did not belong to Melanie. Because the first case to use DNA evidence was still two years away, investigators were instead only able to establish a blood type to narrow down the pool of suspects. Unfortunately, of the 94 people questioned, none could be definitively charged with the murder. Though the case soon went cold, the science of DNA testing rapidly became a part of regular police work in the following years, and in 1995, a profile of Melanie's killer was added to the national database. It would remain this way for another 20 years, until a chance accident blew the case wide open. In 2014, a woman named Claire Hampton got into a domestic dispute with her boyfriend. Hampton had assaulted him and broken his necklace, at which point the police were called. She was given a caution for criminal damage and a routine DNA swab that was taken as part of the incident. A few months later, when the National DNA database was checked for matches to cold cases, 
Claire Hampton came up as a familial match to the blood found at the scene of Melanie Rhodes' murder. When they discovered that her father, Christopher, had lived in the area at the time of the crime, they quickly paid him a visit, taking a DNA sample. The sample was a direct match to the blood of the unknown killer. Christopher Hampton was arrested and convicted of Melanie Rhodes' murder in 2016, more than three decades after the horrible crime had taken place. That brings us to the end of our list. Do you know of any other crimes that were solved as a result of an interesting coincidence? Tell us in the comments section below. As always, if you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. Thank you for watching.